Welcome to Lux Today, I'm Courtney Ferguson. In today's news, a blow for OLED as one of the biggest investors in technology declares it will never be used for general lighting. And how to protect the lighting specification in the Middle East. That's coming up, so stick around. Hello and welcome to Lux Today for February 23rd. I'm Courtney Ferguson. OLED was once a promising technology that many said would rival conventional LEDs. But in recent years, doubts have been raised about its cost effectiveness. Last year, Philips quit the OLED business altogether. And now, one of the biggest investors in the technology declares it will never be used for general lighting. Osram chief Olaf Berlin says OLEDs won't work for general lighting because they're too expensive to make. The tech will instead have applications in cars and consumer products like smartphones and televisions. Unlike LEDs, which are point sources of light, OLEDs consist of illuminated panels. If the price could be brought down, they would have exciting applications in architectural lighting. The problem of high cost has been compounded by rapid developments in LEDs. LEDs have far outpaced OLEDs in efficiency, and their prices have tumbled to commodity levels. LEDs have also managed to mimic many of the appealing qualities of OLEDs. Product substitution of a different complexion is causing headaches for the lighting community in the Middle East. It's extremely common in the region for the specified fixtures to be replaced with inferior products during installation. Now, following a number of high-profile incidents, including the evacuation of the Yas Mall and the fire at the Address Hotel in Dubai, product safety is back at the top of the agenda and lighting professionals are working harder than ever to protect their specifications. Independent lighting designer Regina Santos has been more successful than most at this. She'll be speaking at the Lux Live Middle East Exhibition and Conference in April in Abu Dhabi. In the meantime, we caught up with her in Dubai and asked her the killer question, how do you protect a lighting specification? There are lots of techniques that I'm using to protect specification and uh, the most effective ones are actually bringing people on board, bringing the contractor and the client, doing uh, design workshops and having them involved, showing the fixtures. Actually, I usually bring my fixtures to the presentations and meetings to actually in, uh, show them what is being used and why things are being used. The contractor will mostly want to offer the client alternatives and more inexpensive fixtures and usually the client accepts and they wonder why why should I pay so much for one fixture when I could use another and this is when actually you can involve the client and show okay this is a fixture this is why these are the points of why this fixture has been selected and then in a comparison they will understand and uh, usually for them it's a no-brainer and uh, it's so important to keep the specification and uh, one of the projects that I finalized that I was able to keep all the specs this this was um, very gratifying because basically they I, I brought them on board and I was showing I was discussing things with the contractor they brought even the alternatives and I was showing them okay this is the alternative these are the points why I would not use this fixture and this is a specified fixture and but in the end you can even accept one fixture or another because we never know all the fixtures in the market but it's very important to know why you're specifying something and have this discussion with all the design team involved and this is usually what what helps me keep it and I hope that other projects I will be uh, lucky as well to keep the specs. That's all from us at Lux today. Remember you can get all the latest lighting news globally 24 hours a day at luxreview.com. We'll see you back here at the same time next week.